In the lifelong battle with the sea, there can only be one winner. Oh, dear. For skippers Jimmy Buchan and Sandy Watt, a time of reckoning. Increasing severe gale 9 beta, occasionally storm 10. South at zero. With storms approaching in the North Sea, the fishing boat Fruitful Harvest heads for home. Fortis, easterly 6 to gale 8, occasionally severe gale 9, rain then showers. A winter of bad weather and months of poor fishing have tested skipper Sandy Watt to the limit. He can't afford to take chances with his 30 year old boat. should have replaced the vessel 10 years ago but without having a son coming behind me I just felt maybe we'll just have to stick with what we've got till we'll, uh, we'll hang up our boots. The skipper of the Amity is Sandy's best friend Jimmy Buck. Jimmy's been through the winter storms too. The sea is a very powerful force as a skipper and a fisherman, I have the greatest respect for the sea because so much of my colleagues have perished there. And you don't want to be one of them. Forecasts warn Jimmy when bad weather's approaching. Other encounters at sea are less predictable. Hello, Amity, Amity. Fishery inspectors can board fishing boats without warning. Their job is to enforce the laws protecting fish stocks. They're looking for boats that break the rules. Gotta get this log back up to date before we board. But with us being so busy, I don't have time to make it up yet. Welcome on board. Morning. Jimmy must account for everything he's caught. The books and the catch must tally exactly. 46 plus. One mistake would be enough to get Jimmy prosecuted and the Amity impounded. We've completed the inspection in the hold and what's in the hold tallies with what's in the logbook. Over. Everything is in order on Jimmy's boat. Jimmy's livelihood is prawns and right now prawns are plentiful. He sold some of his prawns to an Italian restaurant in Aberdeen. Jimmy and Sandy are out for the evening, along with their wives, Irene and Liz. The right challenge here is to get my friend Sandy to eat it. <laughs> yep, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It tastes half as good as it looks, will be okay. It's only Jimmy who catches the prawns. Sandy fishes for haddock. Lately, it's not been going well, but he hasn't lost his passion for the sea. I absolutely love the fishing. I mean, anything to do with fishing, it's just, I love my job. Couldn't see myself doing anything else. But just when you get a good haul, it's just, just nothing like it. Just fantastic. It just hasn't been happening for us this last 10 months, so. <laughs> but it's going to change. Sandy may not have caught much in recent times, but any skipper knows that fishing goes in cycles. Some years are good, and some are bad. The trick is knowing how to tough out the bad years. It wasn't long ago that Sandy was catching ten times more fish than this. 2004, eh? There was an unbelievable amount of fish about 2004. 7th of December 2004. First haul, 172 boxes. Second haul, 56 boxes. 
Third hall, 62 boxes. Away at home, 291. For three halls. That's the way to go to see. 2nd of December, 2004. First hall, 229. 2nd hall, 49. 3rd hall, 40. Away in 360 boxes. That's an unbelievable amount of fish. I've never seen that before. I possibly won't see that again. Jimmy's boat, the Amity, is only 30 miles from Sandy. And he just can't stop catching prawns. It's a very, very big haul there today. It's going to be on deck all day again. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. The crew have had little sleep in three days of dealing with the huge hauls of prawns. Jimmy has got to make the most of his luck. Next week you can move here, the sun could be high, we could be a strong day, and we could do the suit same to and we're lucky if we get enough prawns to feed the crew. But as for now, fishing bonanza. First mate, Jimmy's right hand man. So far, he's happy with the skipper's decisions. We keep going the way we're going, anyways. We'll have the boat for another two days. So that's that's good for all. Especially Jimmy. Jimmy's very happy. Times are not so good aboard the fruitful harvest. There's not much haddock. And what little there is, is small. Come on, fish, yeah? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. The boat's problems haven't deterred the youngest crewman. Just ever since I've been a boy, again, I've, I've always wanted to go to sea and again, my, my dad had that fishing boat, so I've, again, I, I've, I've always, always wanted to, um, just always wanted to be a skipper as well, again, just the car business and the fishing again. 18-year-old John Duncan Campbell is one of the few young men in Peterhead who still choose to go to sea. Most of my friends are at university or college or that, but they think I'm a bit daft really, then. Uh, I I'm not sure if they make very good fishermen, but uh, I think they think, they think I'm daft a bit. A bit. It's quite an important job, this, because okay, this, depend, this, this will determine how much what, what price you'll get for your fish. So I just try and straighten all the fish up, then put a layer, another layer of ice. Some, some guys just chuck, chuck a fish into, into the box anyway, anyway the one really, but I like to make sure it's straight and I try to mark it as bony as possible. Right. Well there you go, that's a your box of fish there. Beautiful. It's still good times for the amity. Amongst the prawns, there are other rich pickings. Hold the halibut, boys. Prime halibut. Prime butts. 50 or 60 pounds up there. Another one over there as well. They're just beauties. Prawns! 
On the fruitful harvest, Sandy wants to help John all that he can. He decides it's time to give his deckhand a chance to skipper the boat. That's why I lost night in my bed and I just had a thought. I'll maybe let you have a chance to, sh to shoot the gear and do it now for a haul or two today and see if, if you're happy enough uh, doing that just to get a bit of experience. Well, yeah, that'll be sport only. Well, that'll be brilliant, like... The more experience you can get in the better, and if you're happy to do it, well, that's, that's good. At least if we don't catch any fish, uh, we'll know who to blame. Okay. With the skipper out of the picture, John will be in total control of Sandy's pride and joy. Okay, we're cool. Right. Right, so, if it's sunny. I'll just uh, shoot you in a net four or five minutes. So I haven't done that for years. Hope I don't make a blunder. John's job is to keep the boat going at the right speed and in the right direction. Sandy and the crew make sure the nets leave the boat correctly. We can believe it. for Sandy to stop being the skipper. Yeah, you must say no, the nets have been shot successfully. Could have, could have been a lot worse, I suppose. So it was all right. Cool, I managed, I'm chuffed. <laughs> oh, I was a bit nervous, but you, you forget. <clears throat> I forgot about all the, all the nervousness like you said that John's got the first part of the job done, but there's a lot still to come. On the Amity, another surprise visitor. Catfish. They have very sharp teeth on them. Look at that. I suppose you could a proper one, a proper fish on the right. Now, I've never really seen a catfish for sale. Like, I think if somebody's seen that, I think they'd pass by it. I don't think they'd buy it. Would you eat catfish? Whoa! It's time to hook the marker boy back on board. They can't retrieve the nets without getting this right. It looks like sonny has got to be, got to be throwing a creeper. So, uh... He's saying, he's saying he has to do it for a long time, so we'll let you see if it happens. John has to steer the boat perfectly to give Sandy any chance of recovering the marker boy. John! Here you go, Galloon! Controlling the boat, John has to allow for the drift of the marker boy. John! John! Get a quick double heat! Stop out! Get up. John gets it spot on. Oh, I went all right, so could have gone a lot worse. Hold that, touch it! Sandy is just about coping with life as a deckhand. So far, so good for John in his new job, but the riskiest bit, hauling in the nets, is yet to come. I think this, this might be a bit harder, I think, just because there's, uh, 
You've got to watch for a net going into the propeller, so and if the button opens up, it'll be a nightmare. Like all first mates, Kevin has a special relationship with his skipper. I've been with Jimmy the last seven years, eight years maybe. He's easy going, Jimmy's very easy going, he doesn't shout or bawl. That's why he's got the same crew with him for a lot of years. Other boats I see crew changing all the time. It's whether they're lazy or else the skipper is a bit of a pain, it's one or the other. It's the odd time he might get excited about something, but we'll just shout back at him as well. He doesn't get it all his way all the time. Kevin's just, just a very nice guy. He had a, a brief encounter when he left for three months, went to another boat, and he didn't like it. And it was just by chance I met his wife and she said, well, I wasn't happy. And I said, well, my phone's always there. And the next week he phoned me and then come back. I admire him for doing that because to leave someone and then come back shows that he wants to work for you. It's all to do with taking a gamble in life. And Jimmy took that gamble, same as any other skipper did, and it worked for them. So will I take that gamble? I don't think I've got the confidence in myself to be in the wheelhouse. It's time to haul in the catch on fruitful harvest. If John gets this wrong, the nets could foul the propeller and leave the boat stranded. I just, but you've got to try and get a win there at this signal, Judson. Try and get a mouth, get a blanket. We'll get another blanket to you in case fatigue sets in. Yeah. So can you dump all the tails for it? Yeah. Yeah. No, just take it off a slow, ten, ten times a minute. But sometimes we go fast. And it goes here, lift the leg, you let it pop down. But just take it for a deep slow, Ken. You've got a lot of things to look out for, Ken. I could let us break right off. And the, the reel would spin so fast that the, the, the rope would go like over the side of the, would go over the side of the, the, the reel itself. Again, there's just so much things, there's so much things you could, you could do, and it could, it, it could go pear shaped. Again, I've got to try and do it exactly the way it's on his tail ready. Again, if I didn't, if I didn't, then we'll just end up in a mess. Stop the heat! Stop the reels! The nets are getting close to the propeller. This is where it could all go wrong. as a first-time skipper. He's made no mistakes. I'm, I'm glad nothing went wrong again, because that would have been a disaster route. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing's went wrong, so I'm, I'm quite pleased. Like. <laughs> I've got this bed tonight, and I'll think maybe a bit more about it. Maybe, maybe what, uh, what find it's so funny if there's no fashion is getting a good laugh at the skipper. <laughs> oh, you, no, no, you just love him as you're going along, so he'll... Uh, He'll have a lot, quite a lot to do. I've learnt a lot just, a, just about the boat, the boat and how it handles and just how all the, how all the machinery handles can. Yeah, so I've learnt a few from what they can. It's not easy. It's, it's really not easy. Like. Jimmy and the crew have almost filled Amity's hold. He's starting to think of home. Only a face a mother could love looking back at me. The crew know their skipper's habits. He usually tells us to haul 
It's been another bad trip for the fruitful harvest. They've returned to port with just 50 boxes of fish. Not enough. Sandy's got to work out how to stop his mounting losses. There is another way that some fishing boats get by in lean times. Oil companies pay boats to guard against other trawlers damaging their pipelines. It's guaranteed cash, but it's not fishing. Sandy's decided to let the fruitful harvest go on an oil job without him. His boats have only ever been out since I went skipper maybe three times with me not present. And um, he tend to worry about the boat all the time. But uh, this is why I'm doing this maintenance. We'll do this and just get everything that I feel possible to make their lives easier. Jimmy's landed his huge haul of prawns. He's looking forward to a big payday. That's just been back in Peterhead for less than an hour. The prawns are being processed. Everybody's going full speed. Probably within another hour they're going to be out that door and on their way to Europe for someone to enjoy. The time has arrived for the fruitful harvest to leave port and head for the oil rigs. Hey, he's crashed. Let's this boy. I'm getting, I'm getting the baby sitting for the next. Sandy's brought his daughter and grandson to help keep his spirits up. This is actually the only fishing they'll be doing for the next 14 days. So. This is for John. He's, he comes fishing with me when we're not there. Uh, I'd see fishing. He goes fishing uh, on shore. Well, John, to do my own as well. So that's, oh, that's, fine. that's actually... Twin ring. Twin ring, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he definitely needs a break. He's, he's been quite stressed out. He's got a really good crew for the first time in a long time. And he wants to have on to them. <laughs> so I think it'll be good for him to get a break. Although we'll be watching this one for the next two weeks. <laughs> Oh, this is not this is not a good feeling. Oh dear. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, is he going to sit on this bit? Here we go. Well, uh, oh, look with him. <laughs> really. Really quite sad at the minute and just <laughs> at the rest.
restaurant. They're discussing how much longer Jimmy and Sandy will go to sea. I, I never really thought about stopping in a style witness him thinking much about it. In fact, I'm probably thinking about it less now with, with, with young John being aboard the boat. At 47, Jimmy is younger than Sandy. Even so, Irene has doubts about his commitment to fishing. You said you had stop at 40. Then he says it's got a 45. Uh, I know you're probably looking at 50. Me personally, I don't think he'll go as long as 50. Honestly? Honestly. I don't think so. I think you'll get half up really soon. Just weeks later, Jimmy's still taking the amity out to sea. It's a different story on fruitful harvest. The poor fishing has led to Sandy losing half his crew. For boats like fruitful harvest, it's harder and harder to compete with modern vessels. Sandy's had to face facts. After more than 30 years at sea, he's decided to pack up fishing for good. I, I, I spoke to Skipper a few years ago and it says, I, I talked about retiring. And he says, you can't think of retiring yet, you're a young man. And I says, well, when do you know? He says, when, he says, when you're not going to sea with a passion. And I says, yes, but when's that? He says, you will know. I've been aboard this 27 years. I mean, that's a lot of my life. This boat is more than a business. This boat is an extension of me. I mean, this boat is everything. I can't, uh, I can hardly speak about it. <laughs> oh. It's just been my whole life, and, uh, I mean, turn, turn your back at something you love is, uh, it's not easy. Ten years ago, almost 500 trawlers were working from these ports. Today, more than half those skippers have been forced to give up their way of life. Barely 200 are still fishing, like their fathers and their grandfathers and their forefathers who founded the fishing communities in which they live. The trollmen brave the wildest weather and the fiercest seas. They enjoy the good times and endure the hard times. All to bring fish to the table.